to all the participant in this short term training program on applied computational fluid dynamics for automotive space and defense sector our today speaker is mr siddharth borkataki he is currently working as an assistant manager in hevel center for research and innovation he is having more than 5 years of experience in this domain of cfd he has completed his mtech from university of petroleum and energy studies in dehradun and b in mechanical from annamalai university regarding his work experience he is working at hevels india since december 2020 previously he has worked in design tech system graphics as a senior application specialist in the period of october 2018 to december 2020 previously he has worked as a assistant professor in assam don bosco university in guwahati in july 2016 to september 2018 he has also worked in the whirlpool corporation graphic as a cfd engineer for the period of september 2015 to june 2016 sir we are pretty fortunate to have you to a, a person who has worked in this cfd domain in industry so we are pretty fortunate to have you for the last session of this particular stdp Uh, you can start your presentation now sir thank you thank you so much uh for the brief introductions and again uh, i would like to thank once again uh, this is my second time i am i'm privileged to have a uh, talk uh, among the respected faculty members students and uh, enthusiastic uh, people who wants to uh, always understands the technology that goes beyond the books and uh, the current uh, <clears throat> the current demand in the market so uh, thank you again uh, my name is siddharth and uh, i have been working with uh, the cfd for like pretty for 4 5 years almost and um, i have been on to cfd with different different areas different different applications so currently my current organization is havels india limited which is uh, known to everyone here is a consumer industry and i am a part of the center for research and innovations where we are doing cfd on product improvement so my today's idea will be uh, the presentation would be to introduce on cfd which is everyone having an idea or have seen in the last 3 4 days on various sessions uh, but i want to show cfd on one of the perspective which is essential for everyone to know and then slowly i will take you through some of the work case studies which are again um, done by some of the experts of the industry and how they are making use of cfd on those areas so basically cfd and its applications in 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 both the way so we'll be doing that so uh, to start off with i wanted to make the things more a lot of interactive i you can uh, stop me at any at any moment and then uh, you can ask questions to me so that is possible to anyone so <clears throat> i'll be basically starting off with uh, cfd's basic introduction what exactly is cfd and how we are actually doing cfd what are the different schemes uh, which we say as a discretization techniques in cfd so maybe uh, uh, i think if you are somebody has ping me okay that's fine so uh, at any moment uh, you can stop and don't hesitate to ask any questions regarding that so going forward uh, this is something which is uh, very much known to all of you or have been a part of this uh, for long time cfd uh, analysis but before we talk about cfd uh, this is something very much important for us to know what are the fundamental things that goes behind before we actually starts working on computational fluid dynamics or using computers so it's a 150 years anyways uh, old thing so the whole thing started with uh, understanding the main equations that goes behind the movement of the flow or movement of the fluid so that's are discovered by navier's and stokes and together we know at them as a navier stokes equations so navier stokes equations is uh, is is dealing with how the motion of the fluids actually there are a lot of terms associated whenever fluid starts to flow 
generally in our engineering we know the first line that we that we know about fluid mechanics is fluid is something that undergoes deformation under the action of continuous shear stress so this is what we know but from there itself you know things have evolved and and what we get is these are the equations and these equations are just fed into a computer using <clears throat> the language of the computers the program c c plus plus python whatever you we have on the market and then what you see on your screen are beautiful images of the colorful cfd images which looks very attractive but before we go for those images it's very important what is happening at the background so basically the equations understanding is important because these equations are, are, are the otherwise which you will be playing around to get those beautiful colorful images uh, and that we see on our screen and we play around and we understand the physics we discover something or we make innovations so uh, navier stokes equations are basically uh, 150 years old based equations which talks about uh, basically the continuity and the momentum basically it's a momentum equations so continuity equation is something which we know uh, and we were dealing that is a mass conservation momentum equation is in a simple way if you someone asks me then i will say is a newtonian second law which is applied to a moving fluid and that is nothing but force is equal to mass into accelerations and then what you get is this equations at the center where you see uh, the things and what particular thing you will observe everyone is that these equations are written in the form of partial differential equations or pde which we study in our mathematics <coughs> and this partial uh, differential the reason is that they are derived in partial differential form and this partial differential form are again fed into the computer which computer can understand in a way in a way which computer can understand and there we have something called the discretization which is finite element finite difference and finite volume so that's where whole things are coming into picture obviously energy equations you may ask that why the energy equation because we are talking about flow how does it so uh, cfd or fluid uh, we are not only dealing with the uh, when we are talking about cfd it's not only about the flow even when you are doing a problem on heat transfer so the energy <clears throat> the, the in the form of heat which is again moving which is again moving which is as uh, having a certain features of the movement so those part those other things so we cannot even uh, need to also consider the energy equation as well so all these three equations continuity momentum energy equations are the important equations which on the basis of which the whole cfd has been uh, you can say the whole cfd depends on now uh, this is a little bit of uh, theoretical things which i have shown you this is about the solution approaches there are till now currently uh, in the, in the market or in the in the whole scenario of engineering whether it is industry whether it is academia there are three approaches which we have studied when we went to our engineering colleges we have our fluid mechanics lab before we go for our fluid mechanics lab we have something called fluid mechanics 1 as a subject i don't know whether it's still there but now it's basically fluid mechanics 1 and fluid mechanics 2 in fluid mechanics 1 we are introduced with the analytical approach of solving the fluids problem fluid based fluid based problem we are introduced with hagen poiseuille flow we are introduced with the pipe flow where the hagen poiseuille law has been applied we are introduced with coiled flow where you can see there will be two infinitely long parallel uh, plates where the fluid will be inside and you can you are uh, you are we get to solve those in the form of analytical approach that is one of the approach of solving a fluid mechanics based problem these approach have a limitations they are very good when we are talking in perspective of knowledge transfer when we want to understand things in a way then we have something called experimental approach when we go for our labs in lab uh, the first thing that i remember is uh, the reynolds experiment that we all are introduced in a fluid mechanics lab where a dye is being passed and we understand the behavior of laminar to turbulent and then the transition zone so that is something called our experimental approach now this experimental approach is confined not only to our own labs where we start our very basic physics uh, very basic fluid mechanics it is also beyond some of the best known labs one of the prestigious lab that we have in our india is iisc bangalore where uh, if anyone attempts to visit uh, we can see 
there are uh, where the whole aircraft uh, or the whole airplane or the or those areas they have the lab for those testings so the testing labs under the wind tunnel so that's okay, again one experimental approach or if somebody is enthusiastic about cricket the whole cricket ball uh, the swing of the cricket ball which is ultimately the concept behind a fluid mechanics uh, where inside a wind tunnel you can take a new shiny ball or you can take a rough ball one side is shine one side is drive and understand the flow behavior understand the streamlines and the straight lines inside the labs experimental setup so these are something which are available everywhere for experimental setup but the challenges that comes in an experimental setup is that it's not always possible uh, if the facilities are limited we cannot do an experimental setup of a of a of a model which is very large let's say in 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 our uh, colleges or in institutions we cannot do an experimental setup of a, an entire aeroplane we need to take permissions we need to go for some of the advanced lab so we always use the scale down approach we need to maybe we can scale it down the airplane we can scale it to one 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 particular uh, method and then we can see and understand so there is always a limitations when we talk about an analytical and experimental approach in fluid mechanics and then beginning of the 20th century when computers are evolving where right now obviously we have, we are all having having a 6 uh, 8 gb or 16 gb machine is a very common thing and then when we have supercomputing uh, things evolving 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 so their whole the cfd scenario have changed drastically so it doesn't matter whether the model is smaller or bigger it doesn't matter uh, the cost of an experiment and these are certain challenges which were there once starting to get reduced and reduced and reduced as the whole computation thing has evolved and there we come across the cfd so there are three approaches analytical experimental and cfd approach and cfd approach has actually uh, cleared all the challenges that were being faced since that time now uh, talking about cfd in details so <clears throat> which i was talking about at the very beginning of my slide like these three equations are partial differential equations these are written in the form of pd a partial differential equation is something which is not understood by a computer you cannot simply program and uh, a partial differential equation to my understanding there is no way we can directly uh, code a partial differential equation so we have to convert in a form which the computer can understand well, since it works on the uh, the programming language has to be such that it has to convert those partial differential tough actually which are very tough equations into a form which is understandable by the computer and then we have something called finite element finite difference and finite volume these are called your discretization techniques so as you can see here in this uh, in this small image where i am explaining about the mathematical continuum model and then the partial differential equations and then discretization techniques so basically what exactly it means mathematical continuum model is basically the flow domain where we are let's say uh, interested to solve our problem right it's a let's say there's a pipe where water is flowing so we are taking the continuum approach with mathematics of the equations behind using maths mathematics and then uh, the equations are written in partial differential equation in the partial differential form fed into a computer using discretization techniques so that those equations and the physics gets converted into an algebraic equation which is understood by the computer and then you can start your cfd process so this is a very simple way of explaining how exactly a cfd works okay. now that's one of the way uh, your tough equations are simplified using discretization techniques and then they are into converted in a form called algebraic form which is understandable and now we can solve a problem that's one of the way now I want to understand the discretization techniques in a little uh, simpler and easier way. We all have studied in our uh, post curriculum, basically in our sometimes it's an elective option, sometimes it's a part of the curriculum, uh, the finite element method, or maybe we are all aware of the numerical methods, which is one of the very important subject in <coughs> our engineering. So based on those theories, based on those practices, discretization techniques comes into picture. So here you can see on the images these images are of an aerofoil 
Okay, it's an error file, as you can know. So in the discretization techniques on the left side, uh, the error file, it is a mesh behind the error file. You can see the mesh, the shape of the mesh, the triad mesh. It's a triad shape. And the same error file, there is no mesh. So these are all points. So in order to convert the tough partial differential equations into a form which is understandable by everyone, so you need to have a discretization techniques and there are two methods available right now or being used everywhere is a mesh based discretization techniques or a mesh free based discretization techniques. So you can either do a meshing or you may not do a meshing and convert into something called as a mesh free methods. However, 99% of the problems that we solve in our industry are based on the mesh based methods because the reason being Mesh-based methods have been really, really advanced and uh, the standard practice are being developed. Uh, Mesh-free methods are still on, an, uh, on, the, on the verge of um, adaptation. They are still going on. So this is a discretization techniques which we talked about. And in details, if you ask me, uh, there are a lot of softwares. You might heard about Altair, you might heard about Ansys, Comsol, um, Star CCM, OpenFoam. So these softwares, uh, are based on certain discretization techniques. So as you see, if you are talking about a finite element methodology or finite element based discretization techniques, Comsol and Altair are the two important industry, global industry, Comsol uh, and Altair. They are, their codes, the CFD codes are based on finite element methodology. While ANSYS Fluent, which is one of the leading software along with STASICM Plus in the CFD domain are based on finite volume methodology. As, as well as there's a very demanding tool, especially used by academicians right now, is an open form, which is a free tool being used by academicians to do a lot of research work. It's also based on finite volume. So these are all mesh-based methods developed by industry where their codes are being shown. And then there is something called mesh-free methods. So there are some names I have mentioned. So these are very limitedly used, like SPH, smooth particle based on SPH methods and lattice Boltzmann methods like uh, softwares are like ultra fluid x nano fluid x no grid dual SPG. so these are some of the use softwares which are very not common in the market so which are based on mesh free methods so definitely there can be some questions from anyone like why a finite element method or a finite volume method which one is good or which one is bad so there is nothing such thing like this is a good or this is a bad both all are based on whether it's a finite element based discretization techniques or a finite volume based discretization techniques they are all based on a certain level of physics certain level of mathematics and uh, it's it's always uh, having a good side. but however for most of the cfd problems uh, are based on finite volume methodology uh, still finite elements are said to be robust and uh, they are quite uh, give results at a very short period of time so that's one of the advantages of the finite element methods where we are not working much on the mesh we are working on the node so there are a lot of things we can always discuss on this so going ahead further uh this is the something which i wanted to talk about or maybe we can start our uh, basic work about cfp from here onwards so i'll be I'll not talk more, more on these equations and all after us, and I'll be presenting some more interesting topics which would be looking uh, more uh, to make the sessions more in, uh, interactive one. So this is what I was talking about, uh, what is CFD. So CFD is just not only about the fluid flow, it deals with, uh, again, heat transfer, chemical equations, mass transfer, or these phenomena where there is a flow involved and these governing equations are based on continuity momentum and energy. So whenever this is. so this is how the CFD looks like. You define your physics, you have your equations, they are discretized. And then once the discretization is developed, oh, using the high-speed computer, we go for our solutions. So we go for solutions. So, so up till now, whatever I have explained, these are all uh, the theory, theoretical approaches or you know the the the, the main thing behind the CFD process in a theoretical approach started from basics of fluid mechanics how do what are the methods of solution approaches then we went for the understanding discretization techniques little bit and the types of discretization techniques and then uh, the commercially or the world leading tools which are uh, popular in the market where these discretization techniques are used and some 
thing about CFD or a basic definition about CFD. Now I am going to come about the software part. Like uh, once these are known, so in the software, what exactly does it happen? Let me take a very simple example um, of a, of a pump. Let's say centrifugal pump. So uh, centrifugal pump, you have an impeller inside which is rotating, let's say, around 2500 or 3000 RPM. There is a suction head, there is a delivery head. So pump will, from the suction head, the impeller will try to, uh, will try to take the fluid or it will try to suck the fluid inside and deliver it at a particular head. That's how the whole uh, centrifugal basics of uh, working of a centrifugal pump. Now, uh, when I say, to model student or uh, our industry people like I want to develop a centrifugal pump using this this conditions these are the RPM this is the design so the first thing that comes is the CAD the CAD the designer this is how we process in the industry we have a idea of designing a pump or designing anything that uh, where CFD can be applied so first thing is the CAD we, we see the CAD uh, we check the designs and based on that we Manipulate on our mind behind the whole physics, how we are going to solve. That is the first stage. And that's where the whole process starts. That's called the pre-processing part. So pre-processing is not only the meshing, it's, it's more about understanding the CAD, retaining the critical components of the CAD. That means whatever the part you need in a CAD that we will retain, whatever you will not read that you will remove. So maybe you do not want the nuts, you do not want the bolt, you do not want many features of the CAD. So those removing those and getting a very clean cat and extracting the fluid volume from the cat. So these things comes under pre-processing. So you can see step one, two, three, four. These four processes are a part of the pre-processing. Creating regions, associating, that means the whole meshing, how you will apply the mesh and all that. Once the pre-processing is done, so generally CFD is divided into the whole CFD process is three, pre-processing, solving and post-processing. So pre-processing takes 70% of our time. So we're starting from the CAD to mesh and then retaining the critical components, applying the correct mesh, checking the mesh. This is something which takes a lot of pain, uh, getting a good quality mesh. Once the mesh is done, then we go for solving the problem based on the, whatever the physics, which is uh, like in case of a centrifugal pump, which an example I've shown, it's about just uh, applying the correct boundary conditions where how the pump is rotating. Is it a cyclic or anti-cyclic? Uh, what is happening inside with what velocity or what mass flow rate or with what pressure the fluid is entering from the suction head? What are the other information you have? So that's where you play around with the solver and also the equations of the CFD. So this is the most critical and again, the most uh, important part is the solving and post-processing is about extracting your data as results as per your problem definition. So this is what I was talking about. <clears throat> Let me give a very, very simple yet an example uh, of the three process that we have discussed is pre-processing, solving and post-processing. Now, <clears throat> we'll start with the pre-processing part. Uh, as you can see on the first image, there is a CAD model where uh, I want to understand that uh, some fluid is entering, let's say water, air, whatever the fluid is entering and uh, it's going out. However, at the midsection, you can see there is a reduced reduction in the cross section. Okay, so definitely there will be some uh, interesting behavior of the flow, which we want to study in the, in the form of pressure variation, in the forms of velocity variation. That's our objective of the problem. Now, when we get a CAD model, as a CFD engineer or as a CFD enthusiastic researcher, the first thing that we need to do is what are the important parts in the CAD we need to retain? Do we need the top portion? As you can see, there is a cylindrical black portion. Definitely, this is not a part. It's not going to play any role here. We are only interested in the flow going from inside and it's going outside and the central region. So we will make the CAD or we will simplify the CAD in such a way, as you can see on the second image, where you see the change in the CAD. So we are keeping the CAD in such a way that whatever the parts required for our problem are only retained rather than the unnecessary components. So this is where the whole 
skills comes into picture for the pre-processing. And you can see here two, uh, in the second image, I have mentioned something as 2D and 6D. That's something called as an extension of the pipe. That's done because uh, for the flow to properly develop fully. So that's uh, another war, uh, tricky terms we use in CFD. But the objective is uh, to understand that how the whole thing happens. And then we do the meshing. We divide the whole care into small, 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 small components. And then where you can see the mesh. And in the third image, you can see inside the mesh, inside how the mesh looks like. If I take a cut section from the center, this is how the mesh looks like. So once the mesh is being done, the next thing is your solver. So in this problem, uh, whatever the conditions given to us, like say at the inlet, there is a flow happening. What is the velocity of the flow or what is the pressure with which it is flowing? So whatever the data are given to us, along with the correct material properties, operating conditions, and many other terminologies uh, associated with uh, solving. This is a very critical stage. Definitely, we cannot talk in, a, in, in this period of time. There are a lot of things uh, which goes behind the solver. But overall, this is what the thing. The solver is all about applying the right physics in the software. And then you get something post-process where you can get some really interesting and colorful images. And you can see here in this problem, the whole physics is to understand what exactly happens at the portion, at the center portions. As you can see, there is a sudden change in the cross section. And you can see there's a, there's a rise in the flow. And this is a red region. So this is all about the post-processing is all about uh, extracting the right results and uh, whatever the physics you are trying to solve. So this is how the whole CFD process goes around. Now, post-process also comes with, uh, as you can see, the results, the contour ranges. So you can see uh, the blue mark and the red mark. So blue mark determines the flow to be zero. And the red mark determines the highest flow that has been attained. Now, as a, as a mechanical engineer, as a mechanical engineer or as, a, as an engineer, as an as a, as a person or as, a, as someone who is having a physics knowledge, well, uh, how to interpret these results? Why I am seeing a blue here? So blue signifies that the flow at the wall, at the wall. So we know from our mecha Newtonian uh, mechanics of, of fluid mechanics that uh, there is something called no slip boundary conditions where the flow tends to be coming almost closer to zero at the one. That is the behavior of the flow. So that is the physics we need to understand. And that's what the software is giving you in the bluish region. So these are all walls where the flow is getting stick. So it is actually following the no slip conditions. So this is how to actually understand or analyze a post-processing tool. It's not just about observing the colors and then making your own assumptions. It's about looking at the results from different, different angles. So this is all about the whole CFD process before I move to the applications of CFD in various domains. So this is uh, something like I have chosen some set of problems uh, from, from some of the publicly available um, areas, I mean, the materials which I have with me, uh, some of the research based. So I'll start with an area which, which where I am actually working uh, where, where I am more involved. So I'll start with the heating, ventilation, and air, air conditioning industry. So basically, I'll talk about that. So the, here, I, I am presenting one problem, which is uh, not specific to any industrial problem, but uh, definitely someone who wanted to start uh, CFD with the very basics can definitely try this kind of problem. Uh, at the very beginning. So here you can see uh, there is a room. So uh, inside the room at one corner, there is a glass, uh, glass bowl. Uh, you can see there's a glass. So you can think of as a bulb, okay, bulb, small bulb, uh, like an LED bulb, the kind of a glass of an LED bulb. Okay. And with a certain thickness and also the outer surface of that glass is uh, having a temperature of around 60 degrees centigrade. So maybe it's getting heated because uh, the bulb may be running for 
for a period of time. So it might be getting heated. And the pink portion, which you can see on the right side, the entire pink portion is nothing but it's your room, which is nothing but your air. So it's a bulb. There is a bulb on one side, which is heated to 60 degrees centigrade. Uh, the bulb's thickness at uh, the outer side is also mentioned. And uh, let's say there is an, uh, again, there is an air gap inside the bulb. Now I'm talking about the inside the bulb. There's, with that thickness of 2 mm in the bulb, you can see there is an air gap also. Because anyway, bulb will have air inside. Whatever the shape of the bulb round it, or how, there would be bulb, uh, air inside the bulb. Along with that, there is air inside the whole room, which is in pink in color. And the room temperature is assumed to be, let's say, 25 degrees centigrade. Now, uh, we want to understand here, uh, obviously, the heat, heat, heat transfer from the body at a higher temperature to the body at a lower temperature. How does actually heat travel starts to travel? And how the air, which is, I would say, 25 degrees centigrade, is colder in colder, I would say, compared to a 60 degrees centigrade. So, how does the whole physics looks like? How it would be? So we can we can obviously think it of an, uh, from an assumption. So, but to critically solve such things, uh, it's it's like like this. So this is how the results would look like if you do a CD analysis for this kind of a generic problem. So over a period of time, over a period of time, we can see the hot air. The air also starts to get heated as it comes in contact with the bulb which is having a 60 degree centigrade. So here, which is having a 25 degree centigrade. So there would be a convection phenomena which would be happening. Right? So there is a heat transfer coefficient HTC as a result of which the convection would play a role. And hot air flows up while the cold air flows down, obviously due to the buoyancy effect. And as you can see on the left hand side, the individual temperature of the glass inside because glass is exposed to a 60 degree centigrade. There is air inside the glass. There is air outside it. So how the physics would like look like? The air would be trying to taking away the heat from the bulb because air itself is, is, is it's a natural convection, I would say. It's, it's a natural convection problem. So, so this kind of behavior happening inside a room uh, as a result. So these are certain things which we always a very uh, good practice for anyone to start off and uh, you know want to study CFD, so these sort of small basic problems are the best way to start off. Now coming to an industrial problem, so this is a industrial problem which is very common, like an air cooler. So air cooler are widely used across all the areas, uh, the summer regions, especially in the northern regions, very summer, also in the western region as well. Uh, so. So, uh, air cooler, it may look like, uh, if I talk about the general constructions of an air cooler, so how does it look like? So, air cooler is just there will be a fab door inside, or a fan, and there will be a box where, the, you know, this, this is called as a honeycomb, in, honeycomb structure inside, where you can see small, small droplets of water will be starting to flow. Air will pass through that particular honeycomb region. There will be pressure drop happening. And the cold air starts to flow. Obviously, uh, this is how we uh, inside an air cooler. Whenever we kept inside a room, this is how the whole thing looks like. But how about we we think if think of uh, designing an air cooler from a CFD perspective? How how would the thing be? And what are the advantages? Definitely, and why shall we model? And there are so many air coolers available in the market. It's just about placing the fan putting the things right in the right order and then doing an experiment and then getting the things to sell. No, that's not the how the things looks like. How about I talk about an air cooler which is having five fan blades rather than a three fan blades. So these are certain things we, we always want to improve on a product. So in this air cooler, if you see there are, uh, we this, this work has been done by an organization. So here uh, they started to play with an air cooler with the three fan blades. And then they change into five fan blades, observing the difference they are getting out of it. And so the whole model uh, is, is, is initially, you can see the physical model, the white color. Uh, the, if I start from the image at the left side, top one, which is the physical model. And then a CAD engineer would define, uh, would make exactly the same model, which is available on the physical model. Now, 
as a CFD engineer or as a CFD enthusiastic person, uh, the idea is from the CAD model, how to simplify the CAD model and make a model which is absolutely good for doing a CFD analysis or we say a FEA model or FEM model. So we, we improvise the CAD model and we only retain the critical components necessary for the analysis. And then we started to analyze the fan side, how the fan is delivering the air, the pressure side and the suction side of the fan, how the velocity would look like, you know, wherever there is a chance of recirculations, can we improve that velocity? And then doing a testing on that and correlating the test results with CFD. So this is how the whole product innovation basically works. So this example that I brought is to give you an idea how we as in the industry works, uh, where how we uh, deal with the product innovation. And this is uh, again a very similar work. Um, as you can see, uh, this is for an again from an air cooler. We are now shifting to an air conditioning AC. So this is a split type AC. So in a split type AC, as you can see on the first image, uh, as you can see the fan. So that fan uh, that is placed at the rear end of that bio, of, of that split AC is we name as a bionic fan, bionic axial fan. So there is a two different categories of fan. One is a radial fan and there's an axial fan. So here we are basically using the bionic axial fan. Now, whether that fan is correct enough to do, uh, or, or maybe we are using this for over a period of five years, and then we are finding certain challenges which the fan is, uh, which the customers have been facing. So we went there and we tried to analyze the fan and uh, we saw some really interesting results. And based on that, uh, we made certain changes on this product uh, and then uh, able to develop a fan. So fan development is a very much uh, criticality in an industry like ours. Now, uh, that's all about the uh, consumer-based industry, which uh, I've been a part of right now, and what the kind of work that we do. A small uh, idea about, about that. Now, moving forward is something the automotive industry and the most uh, improvised or most, I would say, uh, matured industry in our country is the automotive industry and CFD, first of all, was applied in this industry. So automotive industry has no limitations on the uses of CFD. It's being used everywhere, whether it is about the whole car, whether it is about the component level car, whether it is about the human comfort, external aerodynamics, bulb of a car, radiator of a car, tire of a car, or you can talk about anything. You have anything on the mind. It's already applied in all the industry and automotive industry is getting the best benefit out of using the computational fluid dynamics. So here you can see those beautiful images are here. So I'll explain you what exactly the images. So here, <clears throat> the image that you see inside the vehicle where there are pairs, seating seats inside. So this is done by a renowned organization. I think this is a, this is an, um, uh, this, this kind of works are done by almost all the industry like General Motors, Maruti and all that. So they understand how the passenger comfort the person sitting inside is how, how much of the air he is getting to the person sitting uh, at that end. So that comes under your passenger comfort. The radiator or the intercooler, which are used in order to cool the engines. So this is, these are some examples. External aerodynamics of a car. Definitely external aerodynamics to some extent it's being limited, not in that way. But uh, yes, definitely uh, some of the some of basically using the formula formula cars but nowadays for designing the spoiler and and those are being used and then <clears throat> talking about the headlamp brakes you can see here so these are being used especially for the cooling purpose or uh, the lifetime of a brakes or lifetime of a tire how much of that. so these are the applications being used in entire automotive domain uh, when we talk about cfd uh, the wind, the wind energy or something that has, the CFD has evolved basically with the wind, basically the wind energy. And this is one of the area that basically comes under the turbo machine spot, the turbo machinery. So where uh, varieties of applications uh, starting from the blade design, 
starting from the fluid structure interactions, that is the interaction of the fluid on the structure of the blades, the stability of the blades, optimization, various terminologies on the turbo machineries are being used for performing a CFD. So anyone starting on the turbo machinery part can start off using a 2D aerofoil and perform certain uh, basic analysis like understanding the lift and drag and pressure coefficients. So this is how we start off basically when we try to do a turbo machinery problem, we start off with a generic aerofoil. Oil and gas, yes, there are uh, really complex phenomena um, done by some of the leading industries like uh, Halliburton, uh, Weatherford. <coughs> These are the industries uh, which uses CFD for uh, various various research based applications and these are all based on uh, not only single flow, these are based on multi-phase flow uh, physics uh, along with, so these are not directly a CFD problem, so they are all a multi-physics problem where the involvement of fluid along with uh, vibration, noise, then there's a structure, so all these are together involved in the oil and gas industry. Civil engineering and architectural engineering are also being <coughs> uh, used, are also using CFD on a larger scale, especially on uh, designing large buildings. <coughs> so flow around building is one of the area uh, where <coughs> based on the CFD results, the building designs, for example, uh, a building is being designed. So if there is an overcast condition, if there is a humid conditions, or different, different based on the weather, uh, based uh, how the air flow would be and how it would affect basically the building. Uh, also, the green green building concept, which is now very much uh, common in Singapore, uh, which is coming, and also in some of the European and, uh, countries, where the green building uh, using appropriate amount of sunlight, how it can fall. So they are seeing these utilized to do a radiation problem uh, for effective design of the green buildings. So. This is uh, being quite uh, widely used uh, in, in this area. This is again a very much interesting. <clears throat> now, I would like to pause for a moment and talk about this particular area, which is the future, which is not the future, actually, it's already being started. That is our e-mobility. Nowadays, every, everywhere we go, because of the rise in the price of the petrol and diesel, <clears throat> There is a huge shift in the industry right now in moving to electric vehicles. So this is the this is the area where everyone are now concentrating upon because this is how the future will be going. So here I present a case of a of an e-mobility of an electric uh, electric vehicle segment based CFD and <clears throat> how the CFD can be applied on this particular area which is booming in the market right now. So, uh, battery is something which um, is being used from long time. However, we never thought that battery can be used in a vehicle and we can run a vehicle the way a petrol is or a CNG or diesel is running a vehicle. So that's one of the questions that has come to the minds of a lot of people and they started in, in that idea into, into an entire vehicle. So, uh, the battery research has uh, finally seen that Temperature affects uh, the battery's life. Okay. So in India, let's say uh, our, our climatic conditions are very much interesting. Let me take you to the Jammu and Kashmir region on the northern part of the region or to the Kanyakumari or to Arunachal Pradesh or Assam or in the eastern region or uh, in Maharashtra and Gujarat. So we have a very interesting form of uh, weather. There's very hot at some part of the India at particular time. There's raining at some other part of the India. So the big challenge for an electric vehicle is India's uh, turbulent, I would say, not a turbulent, but India's varied weather conditions. Because the battery's whole life is dependent on it. If the battery uh, is exposed uh, in these conditions for a long period of time, then the battery's life, also its chemical reaction rate starts to happen and it degrades. So it has been found that uh, 25 to 30 degrees centigrade is the ideal case where the battery definitely can stay for three to five years. So a company which is making battery can tell that at least my battery will run for three to five years. Okay. So
so the challenge in the automotive industry who is making who is into electric vehicle is maintaining those batteries at 25 to 30 degrees centigrade no matter whatever the condition may be or wherever we are running we are running at Ahmedabad or we are running at uh, Calcutta we are running at Bangalore or we are running at Delhi wherever so that is the red that is the uh, ideal one uh, generally 10 to 50 degrees centigrade is where the whole thing ranges and uh, if it is still within that range of around that then also there is a guarantee that it will be the battery life will be three five years so for industry this is a challenge now how they are going to make that battery making a battery is very easy that's available but how the batteries will be maintained under that temperature range so generally this is how the whole uh, battery set in an e electric vehicle looks like so there is a large set of single 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 battery in in a pack okay they are all kept closer to each other in a, in a set of and they are battery pack and they are fed there and uh, there is a motor which is again fed and whole things instead of an internal combustion engines it is a the construction looks like that the battery and the EV. now these batteries have to be kept at a temperature which is obviously the recommended temperature range anything uh, higher anything the battery starts to heat up there is a chance of a serious damage which can even destroy the whole car there's a major firing can happen so maintaining the del t that is a del t that, that is a t1 minus t to the temperature of one battery is let's say this much or temperature of the nearest battery is this much so maintaining the del t between them is of a prior importance otherwise the performance and the life of the vehicle will be affected this is the cfd simulations which i want to present uh, to everyone here so this is how the whole battery set looks like. Uh, this is one of the set. There are a large number of batteries. There's a 208 cells, as you can see on the red, red, red. These are our 200 cells. There can be thousands, 1,500, 2,000, huge. So there is a tray where you can see there is a battery sets. And uh, at the bottom, you can see there is a coolant channel, which is being provided. The reason being provide, of providing a coolant is maintain that temperature so that the life of the battery can be maintained without affecting and uh, generally these are the studies which are being done from a standard literature they are providing the the data to us and this is the ethylene glycol which is a coolant being used and the coolant details along with the materials they are providing on this uh, entire battery pack along with uh, you can see at the bottom there is a little bit brownish color which is nothing but it's a base aluminum plate is being provided so this is how the design of a battery pack looks like now a cfd simulation has been done on this and from the cfd simulation it's being observed that there are certain batteries which are get, getting really high uh, higher that is a um, temperature coming to around 37.7 degrees centigrade apart from having uh, providing the coolants now this is the industries are think started to think like where uh, are we wrong or where we can improve upon rather than where are we wrong where we can improve upon they check the results can we reduce the idea is to reduce these temperatures which is coming here the red zones this red zones needs to be reduced so this is what cfd is being providing the information to a ev segment now as an engineer they come with some design improvement design ideas they provide an aluminum plate at the top, as you can see, there's a certain change in the design. Design has been kept same, but there's an introduction of an aluminum plate over it that might little bit increase the weight, might be. But at the same time, there you can see a direct reduction of a temperature from 37 to minimum reaching to 35. So that is one of the improvement that has been made. And here we are using the coolant. Now, in the next study, the coolant is not being used. We are not using ethylene glycol as a coolant. And letting the normal air to pass across this battery, the air which is available around us. And observing that, how air can take away the temperatures away. So this is done using air. So this is a natural convection based cooling. Uh, and the other was not natural convection based cooling. It was basically using coolant as a so these are certain examples which um, are being done by the ev in the ev segment 
especially for uh, the battery research. And there are countless other works which is going on, especially on the motor segments. Definitely there are works which are going on. And nowadays uh, uh, you can see the scooters, Ethan Energy uh, is again one of the leading scooter making. Uh, and obviously Mahindra is also on that uh, EV segment. So a lot of organizations, well, the two wheelers, even the startups from some of the renowned institutes and also from the, some of the good private institutions have come up making their own scooters and these research are being done at an academic level itself with the support of faculty students so these are certain things to be uh, always encouraged uh, in terms of uh, in the in the ev segments so for an education institutions there are a lot of opportunities uh, this is just i want to add uh, if any anyone interested to uh, know how an education, a growing education institute or a renowned education learning institutions like yours, ADIT. So these are the options which are being provided from uh, some of the organizations like ANSYS, Altair. So these are the organizations which partners with universities in educating the students and faculties. A lot of center of excellence have come up uh, in, in this. Faculties can do their consultancies uh, inside. So these are the joint options. So these, these, these are some of the scopes which an institutions can take up. So I want to end my presentation here. Uh, maybe I can uh, come, come and uh, have an interactive sessions with faculties um, and students here. Thank you very much, sir, for such a wonderful presentation and explaining the applications of CFD in various domains. Yes, any participant having any questions, uh, he or she can ask. Yes, any participant having any question? Uh, I got a question. Uh, is there is any provision for internship in your farm? Well, uh, about Hevels, uh, there, to my understanding, because I have joined very recently, around two, three months before. So there are a lot of interns which are taken from the institutions which are being tied up. So definitely, uh, I'll be happy. You can write an email to me always uh, on this and I can uh, take it forward to the concerned people. Definitely, I can do that. Uh, if 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 you want to know more about it, then um, uh, my suggestion is to check uh, Altair University program. Altair is a organization where I was working earlier prior to joining Hebels. So there are a lot of options that comes uh, under Altair and ANSYS under university programs. So where a lot of internships positions comes. But again, uh, to get an intern, this is one of my sincere suggestion. Uh, Definitely at, an, at a stage where there is a third or fifth semester student. So uh, the expectation is definitely not too much, but uh, that level of uh, interest should be there. Uh, definitely, it's not about having a, spending a time in an organization. It's about having the right uh, interest. So that interest, if definitely there are with the, in the students, then yes, uh, you know, there would be a lot of options. But yes, I can definitely, Professor, uh, Sir H.N. Pandya, definitely I can, Sir, take your Concerned, you may always write an email to me. Uh, I'm in touch with Maharshi ji uh, in the last few months as well. So I can take it forward, definitely. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Sir, my name is Nirmal Kumar. OK. Sir, you saw there uh, that uh, battery, because in India, uh, the air, the temperature is uh, not uh, mean same in everywhere. It is uh, fluctuating every part so it is very difficult to make a such kind of battery so how the research in r d uh, team is uh, they are doing the uh, implementation in that way or they already uh, yeah. created uh, that battery see uh, good question Nimal. Uh, see first of all right now so far the research organizations across all over the world are focusing on lithium ion battery Okay, so because lithium iron is a little bit cost effective and there are certain other um, advantages which are being seen. Yes, there are a lot of other battery works going on, but commercially available is lithium iron. 
now what they do on a testing uh, testing is not only done for a temperature like india where there is fluctuating but testing is also done for like at an extreme case let's say around 50 to 60 degree centigrade there is a room where they will maintain the temperature and they are testing those batteries for like for long for long days and then they are observing the behavior so in india since the temperature or the, is so much fluctuating across all india but however if you see the temperature there is a range in india it will not never exceed that range maybe in new delhi where i am right now or maybe in gujarat where uh, you are right now we can be sure of that this is the range where the temperature will always be there it cannot go beyond that okay or maybe let's say we are in somewhere in a very colder region uh, let's say where uh, there is snow and ice falling then uh, instead of uh, battery cooling there is something called battery conditioning is being applied where you know battery starts to uh, in, uh, you know uh, instead of uh, using coolant battery is reduce releasing heat which is being actually used to maintain so there is something called thermal management so thermal management is uh, the research area where people are working on like say there is a phase change material which is a very advanced topic so phase change material is being used advancement in the coolants so there are coolants where no matter whatever the temperature may be so these coolants are helping you know to maintain that particular temperature so that battery is safe so those are the techniques or those are the advancements research advancements which are being used and they are uh, you can see on the market now uh, the scooters have come up and they are really doing good yes this area is still evolving but again market always needs uh, where uh, the cost is cost effective yes we can we can always uh, make a phase change material phase change material is very much is not cost effective it is very costly so that's why market is still yet to put phase change material as a coolant so now if you ask me ethylene glycol is a cost effective coolant uh, and it is being used by most of the uh, batteries manufacturing questions yeah so i hope uh, i have answered your question uh, yes sir but in pcm you are talking about yes. uh, phase change material it is used in for uh, building also uh, that it is fixing in wall uh, secondary plate after primary plate uh, so that it will be maintain cool of the temperature of the room probably i am not sure about that uh, maybe it might be used in buildings correct uh, in india yes no no in india it is not not used yes either, yes yes it yes, is yes, used yes. in uh, other foreign country it is uh, started correct so i read some uh, literature paper so that's why is it okay 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 that is a good information so and sir i yeah. asked about uh, regarding sir uh, internship sir sir there mm -hmm. is any internship regarding cfd only means thesis paper for one year internship uh, for one year internship uh, uh, you can always go for altair engineering and nc so these are the companies that used to hire intern a lot especially on the cfd segments uh in no, my sir, you have any you have any such details sir so that uh, yeah definitely i told about sir, because, because sir currently i am doing mtech in cfd sir okay 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 so so alter so, university program okay uh, just a second i'll just write it down in the chat window so please please check it uh, alter university program and also my sincere suggestions to all the students also uh, especially post graduate students especially Uh, and also uh, faculties who are so just completed phd or doing research uh, to start making their profiles in linkedin so linkedin is a very good platform to get connected with industries and uh, so please make a habit of that so uh, yeah i have a linkedin profile sir okay sir. so that is good so in linkedin you can always check alter university program so there uh, you can come across uh, uh, the current because i came last week some news have come uh, i'm not sure please check it uh, alter university program india so they are inviting uh, ideas from various colleges uh, to solve some problems and which will be funded in huge amount and there is again a chance of uh, getting internships or other software one year free of cost so those things are there so please contact me in my mail i can maybe uh, sir, you can share sir you can share your whatsapp number sir so that uh, yeah, surely because sir uh, my internship means my thesis work it will start within 3 uh, to 4 months so okay. i need so sir i need your help sir
so uh, my suggestion is that please get in touch with marshi sir i am in very good touch with him uh, definitely uh, so sir i can pass some informations to sir uh, over mail and then you can connect me uh, whenever you can that is not a problem sure 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 sir yes any other participant having any question yes anyone having any question arpit no sir okay sir i wanted to ask one question that in automobile companies uh, how exhaustive cfd work they are doing or how much importance they are giving to these cfd analysis results because you have shown in one slide that uh, regarding say comfort they are doing some cfd analysis for battery we have discussed so how much importance and the amount of time they are giving to this cfd analysis part especially in automobile industries correct so it's a good question so automotive industry is the most uh, matured industry in our country or in anywhere in the world so automotive segments works in uh, two different ways one of the area will be the production plant let's say production plant will always be somewhere very much far from the main city and there will be something called as a center for research and excellence or center for research innovation whatever you name it so there there would be two segments in the center for research and innovations in those segments uh, there will be one team which will be in the design team and there will be one team who will be in the cae also there will be further sub divisions also design for six, six sigma a lot of things will be there so these teams will coordinate with the production team the production team would say let's say uh, we want to make a car uh, which is having let's say dual exhaust that is the idea let's say there is a bh6 norms has come so the design the concept would always shift according to the market need okay so the, these are the regulations of the bh6 so before the production starts design team will make the design ready cae team will make uh, the ca includes cfd as well as a structure noise vibration the computer simulations so based on the inputs from the design and these teams uh, they will pass those to the production so production team will have always a doubt or there will be a, a technical know how between them and based on that finalization the product will make a prototype of that it will again fail it will again go past so there is a rigorous use of the cfd cae uh, in the entire automotive industry now the trend is slowly shifting not slowly it's tremendously shifting to the ev segments so uh, also with the bh6 coming into picture and the uh, is a battery so uh, whether it is maruti whether it's mahindra or the newly startup companies especially in the two wheelers also uh, everywhere there is a huge demand okay okay thank you thank you sir and one uh, one more thing sir in uh, havels you are right now so what yes, kind sir. of cfd work they are doing because we all aware that havels work in this electrical domain so Correct. what cfd work they are doing right now so uh, havels has got a lot of plants all over india so working at the noida section at center for research and innovation where uh, we are we are with the product team which are making fans so have us main products those are fans uh, there is mixer grinder then there is water heater there is geyser then we have a tie up with a brand called lloyd that makes uh, washing machine uh, acs so there are countless products even today i am not sure how many products are there again i have to see so so many products are there now so in the product uh, innovation team what we do is we go for innovations innovations can be very smaller thing also let's say uh, there is a fan which is able to deliver that same fan this time let's say we are expecting the temperature to rise or the summers have coming um, so we go for slight change in the blade angle how much it is able to uh, make an impact these are some small small things which we are doing and then again nowadays if you talk about the northern india especially in the delhi and cia there is a huge rise of pollution so air purifier is an area where uh, you know we are coming with so how innovative we are the product team would come with certain innovation idea we will do the cfd on those innovations 
and then based on that the product will be coming out in the market so based on the demands uh, we are doing this so there is lot of works lot of uh, innovations going in and around so it's 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 uh, quite a quite a great learning yeah. okay thank you thank you very much sir sir i have one question sir yes yeah. nepal sir in uh, cae you uh, said that uh, sir in cae they are using solid mechanics uh, uh, means solid yes. uh, they are they are doing the analysis of solid uh, yes, yes, yes structural basically and in structural uh, and in yes. CAE, they are using fluid fluid correct sir there is one question in chat box yes what uh, is the possibility of hybrid uh, btm is being implemented in production automobile uh that's a always a very uh, question of debate uh, uh, hybrid go, going for the hybrid one or going with the battery thermal management uh, is still under a under a under a research area so far uh, you know we know hybrid cars have come up i would say in india we have this car from maruti suzuki have a uh, lot, lot of cars actually have made hybrid uh, but implementing hybrid btms is still does not looks that feasible to me currently in the market but still research are going on and very soon we can we can expect right now i think if you ask me uh, i think the tata's nexon is the one which is um, coming in market with with really good results in terms of ev segments and i think this year at least four to five vehicles are expected to launch uh, for the ev segments but your question is possibility i cannot answer because uh, this definitely uh, is under research and discussions but it has not come up yet with hybrid btms uh, in the product in the automobile so far Yes. Any other participant having any question? Yes. Anyone having any question or query? Hello, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, Tesla have joined Indian market. So, what do you have to told about that? Uh, we we are expecting uh, good cars which uh, which are which causes definitely which reduces the pollutions from our country because air pollution is a tremendous uh, challenge right now and whether it is tesla whether it is mahindra whosoever comes no problem we are as a, as an as an uh, as an enthusiastic or as a as a as an indian we always wanted to have that but the prime objective is that the sales should not be the target you know the customer should not you know the company should not target our country as a as a way of earning money rather than uh, they should provide some other solutions like pollutions if you been in new delhi uh, then i mean if you ever come here or have been have come recently then uh, you can understand the automotive pollution is a very critical challenge so tesla's concepts are very much uh, appreciated uh, across worldwide so i think they are making cars as per indian road conditions so which is very much challenging always so we hope in coming days but uh, i still would be very happy to have uh, cars from our own uh, people like tata ratan tata and so uh, they will be our always top priority as now you know it, this is the concept behind our countries now to buy local so hope hope the things get slow uh, food i think i have a very good question here uh, do you believe that aesthetic design of fans varying number of blades or varying span and thickness compromises with aerodynamic performance so mr anand this is the area which i have started to work on very recently okay uh, I, i i will be able to give a very good answer as i starts to work more and more because still now i have not visited the plant because of the covid situation where the fans are being actually manufactured so this this is not about compromise this is a like um, there are blades uh, with five blades designs you can see uh, so 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 you know so everything that is being made is based on uh, the the concept of aerodynamics or you can say the blade theory so based on the blade theory so various aesthetic designs of fans are being done so uh, 
we we are not going to compromise uh, we are going to make this aesthetic designs uh, wearing various parameters uh, not only the number of blades but maybe blade angle lot of things so this is an area i am working on i would like to connect again very soon uh, you know to give you something more uh, inside information very soon so so this area i am working we have our 3d printing uh, options uh, uh, sir uh, right now uh, there are few companies which are using i know which where we are taking the service of 3d printing and uh, 3d printing is like uh, right now i know it's like without this uh, we even don't uh, go i mean i mean few of the departments have already adopted uh, the 3d printing so this is this is uh, adoption is really nice and really good and uh, uh, basically there is something i want to add here uh, there is something called topology based 3d print optimization so this is something which you everyone can go ahead so the 3d printed structure uh, sometimes can have some effect you know we we do not get the real uh, 3d printed structure there can be some band there can be some material loss few things can be there so you can always check the losses in the 3d printed so what we do like uh, not only in havels and many organizations so we do simulation first and in the simulation would give you a 3d printed view in the computer screen and then that can be 3d printed so that's like we are not getting any simply we are from the design we are not doing the 3d printing instead we are bringing simulation based design and doing a 3d print on that so that is we are adapting uh, in in uh, not only us lot of organizations Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Any Thank other person so having any query? Yes. Anyone having any question? Okay then. So thank you, Siddhar sir, for accepting our invitation and delivering such a wonderful talk. You started from fundamentals of CFD, and you have explained all the different applications of CFD, in whether in wind energy, automotive sim, uh, systems, or the work that you are doing at Havels. So it was really a nice work, sir. Thank you for accepting our invitation again, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was a really great honor. Thank you so much. Yeah. to all the participants as this is our last session of this short term training program we'll start the validatory function in the couple of minutes time so i request all of you to remain present in this session as will after at the end of validatory session we'll share the link for quiz and feedback right in this particular platform so i request everyone to remain present we'll just start this session in couple of minutes
Okay, so good afternoon and welcome to all the participants in this validatory function of this short term training program on applied computational fluid dynamics for automotive space and defense sector sponsored by AICT under HUIS, which was scheduled from 1st to 5th March. In this validatory function, today we have the principal ADIT and coordinator of this short term training program, Dr. Vishal and Singh, sir. Head Mechanical Engineering Department, Dr. Vaidi Patel, sir. Professor and co coordinator of this STDP, Dr. Mitesh Shah, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for your presence. Hope all the participants have enjoyed this training program over the last five days, in which experts in the domain of CFD from all across the country have shared their knowledge and tried their best to give you insights and enhance your knowledge in the domain of CFD. I thank you all the participants as well for keeping the sessions interactive. Actually, this was supposed to be an offline program of five day duration, but due to this corona pandemic, the AICT have given us the guidelines to conduct three online uh, training program in this domain of CFD. It was a pretty challenging task to design and execute a three week online training program in an effective manner. But all this has made possible due to the motivation and guidance that was provided by our principal, sir, Dr. Vishal Singh, sir. It was under his guidance, the three, five days online training programs on CFD were organized successfully. First in the December month, second in the February month, and this was the third phase. All the videos of all these three different phases would be available on YouTube. The Third phase videos will be available from next week onwards. So in all these STDPs, we have received very good registration. And in this one, we have received the registration of more than 200 participants and more than 100 participants have attended different sessions. So now I would, I would like to request our principal sir, Dr. Vishal Singh sir, to say a few words in this valedictory occasion. A very good afternoon and greetings to all. I hope all of you must have used your time well. And the session on CFD for automotive space and defense sector must have helped you to appreciate issues and challenges in this domain. I would like to thank AICT, CVM University, for providing us the support to conduct this program. Overwhelming participation by the mechanical en engineers and others across the country from different states has really contributed to the success of this program. Speakers from various esteemed institutions have shared their valuable time and experience with us. I hope this would have added to your knowledge base. We would continue to host many programs like this in future and I would welcome all of you to join the same. So thank you once again for participating in the STDP program organized by Mechanical Engineering Department. I would like to make a mention, Dr. Mitesh Shah, Mr. Marcy Thakkar, they have worked over time for the coordination of this event. Dr. Vaidi Patel, Head Mechanical Engineering, has given them full support. I congratulate the entire team for conducting the event successfully. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Now I would like to request Dr. Vaidi Patel, sir, the Head Mechanical Engineering Department to say a few words. Good afternoon to all and greetings from Mechanical Engineering Department, ADIT. As Marcy said that there was, there, there was a uh, overwhelming response from the participants for the five days FDP on applied CFD for automotive space and defense sectors. 
all the sessions were quite informative and the discussed area will be the great benefit to the all the participants as the topics are more or less related with the academic curriculum moreover the participants gained the fundamental knowledge regarding the cfd for the various sectors as mentioned uh, as a title of the fdp and this fdp will be immensely useful for the research scholars those research uh, those uh, who are uh, pursuing their uh, either the masters or phd's the research scholars can get the technical inputs for their research work from the resource persons and this will also help to the students of your parent institutes because they have greater opportunity for the placements in future also i am very much thankful to the aict and the cvm university and our principal dr vishal singh sir uh, for providing uh, and uh, supporting in all regards moreover my sincere thanks to the dr mitesh sah sir uh, bhoumik seth sir marsi thakkar sir and all of them uh, they have coordinated the event very nicely and those who are working behind this screen they are also congratulated for the making this event successful thank you and uh, i wish that all of you have enjoyed the expert talk from the all the most of them eminent personalities are from the iits or isc so once again whenever you have a time to visit our campus all of you are welcome to visit the uh, adit campus uh, situated at uh, new vallabh vidyanagar in the milk city of anand thank you thank you thank you very much sir now i would like to request dr mitesh shah sir a professor mechanical engineering department and co coordinator of this stdp who was always there uh, to overcome different challenges that has come throughout this journey of this short term training program so I request mitesh shah sir to say few words a very good afternoon to all participants in fact uh, this stdp was sanctioned by aict aqis team long back and it was uh, as professor marshi said that we need to do this stdp in offline mode but unfortunately due to this pandemic situations they changed their decisions and they insisted that every institute should conduct this kind of stdp in three different phases due to that reason this is the third online phase of computational fluid dynamics is carried out in fact it is always difficult to find out many speaker from the reputed institutes when you are conducting such kind of the short term training program and that too in a three different phases three different phases that means you are trying to find the almost half century people from the, across the country which is a very difficult task but as our principal sir has insisted has motivated us like anything he has given the three different areas that we can definitely do these things and identified three different nice area we try to find out the best possible speaker across the country and fortunately almost everyone has committed that we are ready to give the sessions we are ready to deliver deliver the lectures and successfully entire sttp in three different phases were conducted i specifically say my coordinators co coordinators rather professor gomi professor bala and professor marshi they did excellent work in all together and that is the reason we reach up to this level conventionally computational fluid dynamics many a time some students are not aware they are fundamentally not clear in certain fluid mechanics and fluid machines part but then also this all three stdp was really helpful to them also legendary speakers like professor suman chakravarti professor date delivered their talk excellently and we were benefited because of that 
I am pretty sure you guys also will be happy to listen all the speaker, and definitely ADIT will conduct similar kind of the faculty development program or the student development program in future also, and I hope we will cooperate like similar way in the future also. Thank you to all participants. Even many participants have consistently attended all the three SDPs. I really congratulate them. and i really happy because of they have shown their interest excellently in all the three stage so thank you once again to all participants for sparing valuable time and gaining their knowledge thank you thank you mitesh now i would like to request uh, if any participant wanted to share their experience uh, of over the last 5 days they can share their experience of whatever they have learned Good thing or a bad thing. So they are free to share their experience. If anyone want to share, yes. Any participant wanted to share your experience of this SGDP? Hello. Ah oh, yes, yes. Am I am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Okay, okay. I am Durga Sadish from. nid calicut and i am currently studying third year in mechanical engineering so my interest my interest in cfd is from second year in btech so i see i learn some concepts in cfd but i am unable to understand lots of things so i took a course in third year cfd and the, there is lot lots of the doubts in the subject itself I, i am unable to clear from youtube videos like there are lots of missy clubbed so i i took this course and it really helped me in from basics to advanced from where i can go from beginning to boundary where i can go where i can reach in cfd it is very helpful to my career so i would like to thank the organizers for this so thank you thank you thank you very much raman chaneya for your kind words any other participant wanted to share his experience yes anyone yes sir i want to say Yes, actually, this special mention should be given to Mr. Nirmal Kumar because he has kept he has kept all the sessions pretty interactive. He has interacted with all the speakers, and his enthusiasm was really good. It deserves appreciation. So, thank you, Nirmal Kumar, for interacting with all the speakers. Yes, you can share your experience now. Um, thank you, sir. Sir, I want to say that uh, this HTTP uh, program was uh, it was actually I done before on. Uh, in the month of september i done the workshop which is held by nit zalandhar so after that <laughs> i seen on net um, again it was held but uh, due to my semester exam i couldn't uh, attend that workshop and after that i saw uh, again one more uh, workshop is held which was held in the month of march so i registered before and uh, this was very informative sir and uh, in this uh, workshop i learn uh, mainly 60 to 65 percent new things because uh, in my B sir I learned uh, when I am doing my B mechanical engineering I in my seventh semester I learn uh, one subject is FEA finite element analysis from that uh, my interest is in uh, CFD was encourage me so that I want to do for higher studies and after that I saw I search in uh, on internet several colleges and several Engineering colleges, but I not get any master degree in CFD. Uh, I it was getting in abroad or other countries. So in uh, UPS, I got uh, that uh, course in uh, M Tech in CFD, which is as means which is uh, under coming uh, aerospace engineering and specialization in CFD. But uh, CFD can use in almost all field. So that's why I. so that's why sir i taken that course and now i am in uh, my second first year and uh, for my one year it should be uh, my thesis work <laughs> means in industry 
so this works workshop i it was very good and awesome sir and for the who uh, who want to learn more in cfd this kind of workshop should be kept in future sir thank you sir thank you thank you very much nirmal is anyone else want to share your experience okay then so the next is it is my duty to propose a vote of thanks to all who have worked uh, for the successful completion of this particular program first of all i would like to thank uh, dr vishal and singh sir principal adit and the coordinator of this stdp programs uh, he has motivated us and guided us throughout this journey so thank you very much sir then i would like to thank dr vidy patel sir head of the mechanical engineering department sir is always been supportive and he has also guided us nicely in successful conductance of this short term training programs then i would like to thank dr mitesh shah sir he is professor in mechanical engineering department and co coordinator of this sctp sir is always being supportive and guiding us to come across all this different obstacles that we have come across uh, during organizing this sctp the special mention should be given to our management the charutar vidya mandal i would like to thank uh, engineer sri bikubai patel sir the chairman cvm and president cvm university dr sg patel sir the honorable secretary of cvm the shri manish bhai patel sir vice president of charutar vidya mandal professor and dr pm udani sir the director general cvm university i would like to thank uh, professor bala dad sir and professor bhumik seth sir uh, who were the co coordinator of previous two stdp programs on cfd they are also being pretty supportive to me as well and all the other faculty members of mechanical engineering department and the lab assistant of mechanical engineering department who have supported for the successful conductance of this program the special thanks should be given to all these participants who have remained uh, patient to different uh, sessions and uh, kept the sessions interactive so thank you very much all the participants thank you all i am sharing the link for the quiz and feedback now in the chat box so i am sharing the link for quiz and link for feedback Okay, this particular link for quiz and feedback will be remain open for today. Right, so you all are requested to fill this feedback and quiz. Till what time, sir? It will be open today. Till today night. So yeah, till uh, today night. Till today. Sir, this uh, link you can share in WhatsApp, sir. Yeah, sure. I'll share in the WhatsApp group as well. You are sharing yes, the sir. WhatsApp group. No, sir.